So iOS 16.2 is out in the public and lots of people now have access to Freeform, the new app that came with iOS 16.2 and iPad OS 16.2. And I already made the master course for this new app. You can watch it here. Since then, a lot of people have asked me, you know, how does this app compare to professional apps for collaboration and using whiteboards? And especially people came to me and asked, how does it compare to Mirror? And I'm actually a bit flabbergasted by that one because I thought Mirror is, in my eyes, a totally different kind of app. It's a totally different approach on how to use collaboration and a whiteboard. And let me show you why. I think this is actually comparing apples and oranges. You know, it's, 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 it's an unfair comparison. And that's what we are about to do here. We are doing an unfair comparison. So let's compare how Miro, the leader maybe in this kind of apps, is comparing to the new competitor Freeform. Is Miro the king of the Freeform whiteboard collaboration apps? Is it eating the newborn Freeform, which is out just about a week if you don't count the beta phase? Or is the new app Freeform capable of challenging Miro? Let's find out. You see, Miro is basically not a free app. Miro is an app that wants you to pay something. So let's go into the pricing here. And you see, you have a free tier. I wouldn't call it actually free tier because you're limited to three editable boards. So the last three boards you create are editable and all the others are read only. So if you aren't working on three things at a time, that might be for you, for all others. That just means it's just a trial. It's not a free tier, it's a trial tier. So I would just say, you know, just try it if it works for you, but think of Miro actually as a paid app that has a starter tier at eight bucks and a business tier at 16 bucks. They want you to shell out eight or 16 bucks. That's a non-starter for some of you. So Freeform, which is free because it is included in, in Apple, is uh, attractive. So here are all the features you get and an extended description of what is there. And as you can see, there's a lot going on here, a really a lot to go. The next question is, on which platform do you wanna use one of those apps? So Freeform, of course, is Apple ecosystem only. With Miro, since Miro is actually mostly a web app, you have cross compatibility and you can use it on Windows machines, for instance. So if you intend to bring in Windows users, Freeform is a no-go because there is no way you can run Freeform on a Windows machine. So if you wanna use a Windows or an Android system, you need to go with a solution like Miro. That could also be a decision point for you. So once you made a decision whether paying for an app essentially, and the question of cross compatibility is important for you. So once we have that out of the way, let's try to compare them as good as we can. Okay, now here we are. So let's compare the initial screen of Miro with that of Freeform. So what you have here, for instance, you have recommendation of templates and you see there is a fundamental difference because Miro is actually based on reusing templates and on diagramming. And let, let's bring out the big elephant in the room for me. That's why I call Miro and Freeform two totally different approaches to it. Miro is based on you not filling a blank canvas without anything from scratch. Miro is actually based on you using lots of their cool templates and working on those templates. For me, Miro is an app where people are working together in collaboration on diagrams or on structural elements like diagrams, like Kanban boards, like mind maps and that stuff. So you see this one here in all of these templates that they have. And if I go into the templates, you see they have templates for meetings and workshops and cool templates like keynote you know, presentations. So where you, where you have all these these structural elements you have for brainstorming and ideation. So where you have classicals like mind maps or scampers or affinity diagrams, you know, fishbone diagrams, KVL charts, and agile workflows, so workflow charts, all of this one. Charts, roadmaps, so whenever the word map or chart is in there, Mirror is a great, great tool for that one here. And of course you can start from scratch. There's no problem here. Let's do a new board. I create a team board. 
you see and then you have um what do you want to do today still they want you to use a tablet they even are asking you you know don't you want to go with a template here don't you want to do ideation and brainstorming but of course i can say nah i want to have a blank template so and then you have here the tools palette and the tools palette is different of course you have way more tools than you have with freeform you have again the top tool here besides the select tool is templates yeah they really really want you to use templates right so that's just the same selection that we had here so you know and what you can do is by the way the templates are building blocks so you're not bound to one template per document so for instance i can just say okay i give in I use now the template, my, the mind map time template, and I bring it in, it's just a building block, and I can use on the same document, on the same canvas, I can also say, okay, and then I use also a flow chart underneath it here, and I can, of course, make them bigger. Okay, and then I, I can do them side by side, but still, you know, they want you to use templates. That is the primary tool that they, that they use. That's why the template here selector is so high in the list and then comes the next important one is the text selector yes and this is um, something that's not that astounding you have text selection here and you have here because mirror is a web app so you have a web type selector for fonts and all that stuff so you have some font selection here but these are web fonts these are not mac fonts so you don't have access to all the fonts you have installed on your mac for instance then you have the font size the typical styles alignments points links color and so on and so on and here you see for instance something when you select any element and this is neat this is something i wish freeform had but it doesn't is you can connect elements so easily you have all these blue dots here and from there you can drag drag selector points and, and connect them and you create a line and that line then you can say okay it has an error let's let's jump in by the way here so you see the line already has an error but i can of course say it can have an error on the other side or can i can switch sides here i can change the type here and i can create new forms whenever there's a blue dot here i can create a, a new point here and i can make a, even more complex shape here you see <laughs> I can do this all day here and and this is so amazing for diagramming I mean I wish there would be something like this in freeform but it it isn't I mean I will show you in a few seconds what limited diagramming capabilities you have with freeform and for instance something I really mentioned in the master course is you can add text directly to lines here and it forms the path here so this is a connector Right, so you can have it on the path or you can have it something like this one, a bit more readable. So this is awesome, I, I really like this. And, and then you have your colors and all the stuff and you can mix and match. Then you have here, yes, you do have stickies. I mean, this is more or less like Apple has it. You have stickies, you, you can insert links in the stickies. Maybe it's, it's, it's way more business oriented. So you, so you have here, for instance, show author, you can, you can add tags, you can add emojis. You can cluster objects together. You can assign it to people later on. For instance, when it comes to tasks, something like this one. So it is business oriented. Then you have your shapes and bring out your shapes here. Show all shapes. You have all kinds of diagramming shapes, but this is right now mostly based on diagramming. So I would say the shape selection in Freeform has way more shapes in there at first, but this one is of course based on on business usage is way more than that. Then you have lines, okay. And then you have, and now comes the big differentiator, I would say, then you have the drawing capability. And you see here from the selection here that the pen, so the drawing capability is way down in the importance. If you say, you know, templates is the most important part of Miro, then comes text, then comes sticky notes, shapes, connectors, and then comes drawing. And yeah, there is drawing capability here and there's a highlighter and there's a smart drawing. Smart drawing means if I drag something like this one, uh, yeah, it, does, it, it connects it into a smart form. And then you have an eraser here where you can, can erase something that you've drawn, you see, and that's it. And then you have a selection tool, like exactly like you have in, in Freeform, where you can move stuff. But 
You see the pen, you only have actually one pen. Then you have here three, three setups. So you have a thin black pen, but you can of course change the color. You have a red pen with a bit more thicker and a very thick green one. And of course you can change it, but you can only have three here at a time and the color selection is different and not as nice as the one on Freeform. So I actually say this is the big difference here. Freeform is really based, let's go in Freeform in a second. Freeform is really based on you using the pencil and writing a lot and, and doing handwriting and sketching and then adding media and text while Miro is based on you using templates at best and creating structured diagrams, let's say Gantt charts and Kanban boards and mind maps are diagrams for that sake. And then maybe adding some touches with the pen, but this is the fundamental difference. It is a diagramming solution and the other one is a drawing solution on an infinite canvas with collaboration functionality. Then you, you can add comments to any object. You can use frames, which is nice. What is a frame? A frame is actually something that you draw around it and then you can say, you know, this all belongs together and it's frame one or you can call it phase one, whatever. And then you can later switch. If you have a really large canvas, you can switch to the frame here. You have the frame selector here and then you can switch to it you know, bring it to focus, which is nice if you have really large canvas and then you want to jump into faces or, or steps, or whatever. And with Miro, you have lots of other stuff you can add. So they, they have lots of integration with uh, Google images and you, you can even get more apps here. For instance, you have here Kanban, you can create a, a Kanban board just inside here. Just say Kanban board and then bring it in here and you see. And there you have your typical Kanban board where you can add your tasks here. Task one. And then you can move it from progress to done. You see? And replicating this in, in Freeform would be would really pain. Because, uh, you know, all of this, this smart functionality, uh, for instance, that you can, you know, swap cards easily in, in a mind map that you can collapse branches and all this stuff. That's not available in Freeform. Freeform is, is more based on the drawing, on using the infinite canvas as a drawing tool. You can add text, you can add sticky notes, you can add shapes, they're basic shapes. You can add media files and all this stuff, but you can't really create a great network diagram. I've shown you in the master course how to do simple diagramming, but it's really simple compared to this one here. You have real table support, you have mind maps, stickers and emojis, and all this nice stuff here. You have also here your col collaboration, so you can invite people here. You can invite, yeah, I have to rename this here, and then you can invite only by email. With Freeform you can invite through iMessages, for instance, also. This one here is only by email. I think that's no big deal. When it comes to, to collaboration, they're pretty good, both of them. So I would say the collaboration itself is comparable. So let's jump into Freeform. Let's create a new board. And you see here, it, it looks way cleaner. It has way less tools and no templates. Actually, that's, that's sad, but it is an infinite canvas where you're creating something with a limited set of tools, like for instance, in this case, since I'm on a Mac, I'm not even having access to writing tools, which is really sad, Apple. I mean, they, they really want you to use it on an iPad. Let's, let's be honest here. So I could only add shapes and, you know, basic shapes. And yes, you have a connector here. Let's, let's do this one. Let's do, let's do two shapes here. You can do this. Yes, you can align them and you can add a connector line here. But you know, you, you see it's way more clicks and it's way less elegant and I can't, here, insert more points. I, you see, if, if I want to have a com way more complex line, I need to, uh, I don't know actually if, it, if that is actually possible. So forget about this. This tool is, Freeform is, if you have an iPad and you're using your Apple Pencil, that's it. That's the tool you're using for, for, for creating these beautiful boards. And the proof itself, is on the web pages of those two companies. You see, if we're going, if we're going on the Apple website, you see, that is this, this here, that is 
the typical product they think you should create with Freeform. And you see here, it's lots and lots of handwriting, some sticky notes, some images, some media, but the main focus is on people working together on an infinite canvas using the pencil and writing. And uh, if, you are, if you have a Mac, you're either using the associated iPad to write something or you're just commenting via text, you see. But that is what you should create with Freeform. Now let's compare that to Miro. And you see, now we're here on, on the Miro webpage and you immediately see this is what the Miro people think you should create with their app. It's a totally different approach. There is no handwriting here. There is clear cut diagramming. There are you know, charts, flow charts, something like this one, or even see this one here, use it mostly in a corporate environment. That's why, for instance, they go also with the subscription-based approach here, where you can use it on, on, on large monitors or screens. And so I see, I think this picture, this comparison, this comparison speaks for itself. You have these neat diagrams with mirror, and it's an excellent solution for that one, where you can use collaboration and where, you, where you're working as a team on structured elements, structured diagrams, Kanban boards, mind maps, and all this stuff. And on the other hand, you have the limited, maybe, but more creative approach using the Apple Pencil and people writing together on their iPads and you bring in media and all this stuff, you can use this. You can incorporate pictures and, and videos and images and, and documents, but it's mostly using actually the Apple Pencil and then writing on an infinite canvas on a whiteboard. So that's actually my comparisons. That's why I say you can't compare them. So let's come to a conclusion. As you've seen, I think both of these apps have a totally different focus and a totally different approach on how to use a great infinite whiteboard with collaboration feature. I would actually say you have to select the tool for yourself. There is no clear winner. There can be a clear winner for you, but if your needs are different, maybe you go with the other tool. So I would say a clear winner for me is when it comes to either cross collaboration. So using Windows and Android users, and especially if you are in need of diagramming and, and working, especially in a business context with people on diagrams like or on structural things like mind maps, Kanban boards, fishbone diagrams, process charts, workflows, and all kinds of diagrams. I would put all of this in the bucket and call it diagrams. If you use this one, Mirror is the way to go. It's an awesome tool for that one. It's so easy to use, so easy to learn, and the work is done so fast. So if you need to create something like this, you shouldn't go with Freeform. I mean, you can do something like this with Freeform, but it is way more complex because you only have the basic elements and you need to do all these connectors and, and, and descriptions more or less by hand. If, on the other hand, you are more using it in a creative way where you have an infinite canvas and you are in collaboration with your team or other people are using the pencil mainly for writing on, on the canvas and then integrating pictures or videos, screenshots. But the main input tool is the, is the, is the pencil and your main source of input is an iPad. And of course, you, all of your participants are using the latest iPad OS or Mac OS version, and you are only inside the Apple ecosystem, then Freeform is a great tool, but it's a totally different approach. It's a totally different focus. So in my case, I would say you find out what your needs are, and then you pick the right tool. It could be Freeform because Freeform is of course free, and uh, it, it has a lot of potential. It has a lot of power, but don't use it for business centered and the diagramming functions. If you value your time, select Mirror for that case. So I hope that made it a bit easier for you to select the right tool for the job. And I hope uh, you enjoyed this video. And if you like this video, give it a thumbs up. And if you would like to see more of these kinds of videos, hit the like and subscribe button and I'll see you next time. And by the way, if you haven't watched already the master course on Freeform, here's a link to it. And I see you next time. Thank you very much and bye.